Howdy, Nerdorinos! Hello, my friends, it's Nerdbugger here, and welcome to the best comics of 2023. Now, I've been doing this a long time, right? My tastes have changed like a roller coaster superheroes, indies, manga, horror, romance, fiction, blah, blah, blah. Things change over the years. Here I am back in the day talking about comics on the internet. Still doing it 10 plus years later. Today we're going to talk about my favourite comics of 2023. It's a very mixed bag this year. And I'm going to start off by talking about two comics that have honourable mentions. Because they've only had two issues out each. So we can't really say that they're the best comics. Because it hasn't really concluded or finished the storyline. But by gosh, oh golly, are these comics good. Hack Slash by Zoe Thorogood. Now. Let's talk about Zoe first before we talk about the comic. They did this comic in Slowly in the Centre of the Earth from Image Comics and if it had come out this year it would definitely be in my list, but it did not. This book is incredible. It is deeply personal, moving, upsetting at times, existential dread. Um, it's a personal comic about Zoe. They constantly change art styles, panel structures, layouts. It's just brilliant, an amazing piece of art really, when you look at it. Um, highly recommend it if you're in the mood for wallowing in your sadness and feeling all the feels. It's a hard one to come up out of, right? But they then got hired to do this book, Hack Slash. Now, Hack Slash is a series by Tim Seeley. It's been going for a really long time. I think there's like four or five omnibi. I think that's a plural omnibuses. You can school me if that's wrong, right? Great comic, really fun. It's all about Cassie Hack, who is a serial killer or a slasher hunter. So they hunt the slashes and in early ones they're like teaming up, well not teaming up because they're chasing them, like Chucky and stuff like that. It's just a really fun comic. So they pulled Zoe on for doing a new mini series and so far with the two issues that have come out it's so fun. Um, I keep going to say Zoe but the character's name is Cassie Hack and Cassie Hack is attending a school for serial killer hunters, for hunters, um, and they have a new friend, their name is Vlad. Vlad is a monster fellow that just showed up one day and decided they want to be best friends with Cassie and we're following that journey. Straight out the bat, this incredible page layout, this incredible colouring, it's fun, it's gory, it's really uniquely styled for horror. Highly recommend it. Hack slash two issues out, put it on your pull list. Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees by Patrick Horvath. That's a hard word for me to say for some reason. This is like my fourth take of trying to say that name. Patrick Horvath. Now this is a mini series coming out from IDW. It's two, two issues already with I think four or five issues in the entire series. My goodness, you guys, I knew nothing about this comic. And then my co-worker, Jay, was like, Kaz, you should check this out. It looks amazing. Showed me a little sample, told me of the plot, and I was invested straight away. It follows a, what, let's call it like a Richard Scarry town, okay? So it's all, have you remember Richard Scarry? Oh my goodness. Uh, all the little animals live in the town, and they're all like people clothes, going about their business, being adorable, but also being functional people of society. One of those people is Samantha. They run the tool shop, local tool shop. They've got employees. They are very respectful. And then on the weekends, they like to go to the big city and murder people, right? That's their hobby. Now they do it in the big city because I believe the term is don't <coughs> where you eat, right? So they take that to heart and they do their business elsewhere and then come home and live their seemingly normal life. And all is going very, very well until another serial killer starts killing but in their hometown. All eyes are on everyone now. So that's what we're following. Is Samantha going to get caught? Are they going to keep doing what they're doing now that there's another serial killer? So it becomes like a bit of a detective story. But the strangest thing and my favourite thing about this is how cutesy and wonderful the Richard Scarry-esque art is combined with full-on Dexter scenes. Right? Remember Dexter? Am I too old talking about these shows like Dexter? Anyway. It's got like Dexter serial killer people being chopped up meticulously. Things. Right? It's it's just such a crazy, bizarre mix of things. So if you enjoy horror comics, serial killer comics, and Richard Scarry, it's definitely something to pick up. It's gonna be such a brilliant ride. Only two issues out. Add that to your pull list as well. I've got a top four comics this year, and we're starting off with Dwellings from Jay Stevens out from Oni Comics. Now, if you're a fan of Harvey comics, old school comic styling and horror comics, this is the comic for you. It follows the residents 
and miscreants and cops of a fictional town called Elwich. And here in Elwich, horrible things happen. And I mean horrible. As a juxtaposition of the really pleasant Harvey comics art. And that's what makes it brilliant. Again, like Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, this crazy over-the-top horror mixed with this kids-like art just makes for a great storytelling scenario because you're taking these things seriously but it also kind of feels like a black comedy because of how it's drawn and the styling of the characters. In this we see a kid um, get influenced by a murder of crows to bring them blood and eyeballs. Um, <laughs> we also see, this is a weird one right, hang with me here, we also see a clown's finger bone turned into a whistle Right? This is full on horror but done in the Harvey comic style and I couldn't get enough of it. It's a absolutely brilliant comic when the attention to detail is just amazing. In between each comic is fake ads for products, quite often referencing the comic you just read um, by names or the type of product. It is so meticulous in its detail, so beautiful and just a perfect combination because I love old school 60s, 70s Harvey comics and horror comics and it's just brilliant. The only thing I didn't like about it is that it's only three issues. Originally I think it was crowdfunded um, and it was six little issues. They put it into these three chonky boys and now it's getting put into a trade this year. So if you're a fan of horror comics and just full-on stories done in a really fun way, I implore you to pick this up. When, when it first came out people could not get enough of it and it was really hard to get issue one so get onto it. My third favourite comic for the year is Fart School by Mel Stringer. It's fun to say, Fart School. Uh, it's from Silver Sprocket Comics, my favourite comic publisher. If you like cool indie comics, come visit me in my work, All Star Comics, and I'll show you the whole section I made for Silver Sprocket Comics. Anyway, Fart School follows Mel as they attend art school, Fart School, art school in Brisbane, Australia, which is very exciting because it's set in Australia. So it's very nostalgic to me. It's also very nostalgic to me because it's set in the 2000s at art school. So the pop culture things they talk about, the tech, tech technological, technological, that's not the word I want. The, the, oh, come on. Come on, what is that word? Technology, that's the word I wanted. Technological technology. Anyway, they use like CDs and different things that they show in the comic are very nostalgic to me, so I enjoyed that. I also very much enjoyed the colour palette of the comic. It's really unique. I've never seen this choice of colours before and it made me kind of look more closely at details in the comic, things in the background. I just loved it. Such an awesome colour palette. And of course I love the four panel layout structure. I've always enjoyed comics set in this way. Quick, witty, gets to the point. Brilliant. You get to follow Mel as they attend art school. They're going to weird parties. They're going to the local comic book store. It just feels like you're hanging out with a friend catching up and it was just lovely. From start to finish I loved hearing about their process of art school. I wonder if it's all true. Some of it's so zany and crazy but I hope they had a good time. And it looks like it worked out for them because they're, you know, still creating art and being awesome. My second favourite comic of the year is Girl Juice by Benji Nate out from Drawn and Quarterly Comics. In this comic we follow housemates Nana, Tula, Sadie and the titular Ted Bunny as they go about their business having a good time and living their lives. In these little slice of life comics we find sometimes relatable, sometimes silly stories like trying to pay your rent, fulfilling dreams of going to prom but as an adult, going camping with your friends but getting sidetracked by hot people, and exercising a YouTube livestream demon. And through it all Bunny gives that real main character energy. And I think they sum it up best themselves when asked what God's plan is for them, they said probably just to be hot and simple forever. Well done Bunny. I reveled over seeing Bunny do all these crazy things because they're so irritating but so endearing at the same time and I can see why their friends enjoy their time with them. Even though they do things like putting their personal items in the dishwasher or lusting over sexy ghosts. It's just a fun good romp, sometimes real, sometimes fantastical and a perfect escape from this crazy world. And now it's time for the big banana in the sky, my favourite comic of the year.
don't ask what Big Banana in the Sky is. You're too late to the party for that. But it's a book I didn't see coming. It's Night and Dana by Anya Davidson. Now, I didn't even know who Anya was quite a few months ago. I was informed by Liam, who was cruising through Instagram. He said, look at this person's art. You'll love it. They've got a comic coming out. You should check it out. So I did. Followed them, ordered the comic, and then here we are. It's my favourite comic of the year. Now, you'll notice that there's no superhero books on my list this year, and it's primarily because of this book. This book single-handedly brought me back to my love of comics. The reason why I started reading comics in the first place is indie comics. Comics from the 90s, weird, wacky creators with really unique styles and really unique stories. I wasn't interested at superheroes at all. And something about the style and the feel of this book just brought me back to 90s indie comics. And that's all I've wanted to read. Indie comics. I'm reading 8-Ball again by Daniel Close. It just instilled my love of comics again I found it again and I just feel so blessed to have found this book that's the greatest gift this book gave me uh, I, I mean it's a great book wonderful book my favorite book of the year but it also totally fueled my passion for comics that I haven't felt in so so long just poof, like that <laughs> So this comic follows Dana, teenager attending high school in a small beach town in Florida. They're not doing too well at high school because they're a bit distracted. They've got other things they want to do with their time and that's making special effects. They make these weird gruesome videos with their friends with monsters and bruises and stuff like that and that's how what they love doing. However their schooling has fallen behind and their teacher informs them and their best friend Lily that they're gonna have to attend an extracurricular course where they're gonna learn filmmaking which seems great to me but they don't seem that excited. So they begin the course that takes up after school and weekends for them and they start making a horror movie for school about uh, eco problems and water temperatures rising and they get to meet strange and wonderful characters from around town. But tensions flare with their friend Lily as they work on the film as Lily finds romance and has different things going on and all Dana wants to do is make this horror film. You're kind of seeing the ending of a friendship, the changing of a friendship, but also discovering yourself when everything goes wrong. It's a coming of age comic mixed with that 90s indie comic feel and that's why it's my favourite comic of 2023. Let me know what yours is in the comment down below and I'll check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a few months since I've been here. We have a lot to update you with so there'll be a new video coming out soon. I love you. Happy New Year. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye!